Here's the HTC iPhone S, I mean the um, One A9, with rather familiar lines and launching with Android 6.0. I really can't see why HTC needed to copy Apple quite so much, but hey, that's for the lawyers to sort out. It's unashamedly style-centric in four natural colours and unibody metal. There's a 5-inch 1080p AMOLED screen and a new chip to me, the Snapdragon 617, so upper mid-range. RAM is 2 or 3 gigabyte and storage 16 or 32, depending on where you buy it. Why do companies do this? It drives me mad. At least there's micro SD support. And at least the cameras are getting more standard now with OIS and 13 megapixel plus 4 megapixels on the front. Again, mimicking the iPhone, it's the front physical home button that is the fingerprint scanner. Battery life should be meh. With only a 2150 milliamp hour cell, there is quick charge 2.0 compatibility, but HTC doesn't supply a charger in the box. Oh well. If there's one thing that tech reviewers like me have been asking for, it's to have decent specifications inside a small phone. Wanting flagship specifications shouldn't have to mean settling for something that's too large for our hands or pockets. And just about the only company that is catering to this need is Sony, with the Xperia Z Compact series here in its third incarnation. This is the Z5 Compact with Snapdragon 810 chipset inside, a really good camera and monster battery life all in a phone which fits anywhere and can be carried safely, even in the smallest grip. What's not to like? Actually, not very much. The compromises here are sensible from Sony's part. Principally a 720p screen, heck on a 4.6 inch display. Even this is well over 300 pixels per inch. And this also means less processor drain and thus battery use, less RAM use day to day, in fact, RAM is kept at two gigabyte rather than the three gig as on the larger Z5 standard. This was slightly annoying, especially with the no compromise on spec stance, but this boots with around 900 megabytes free RAM. And this is more than enough for all practical use of a 720p screened Android 5.1 device. So no worries there. The three Z5s, compact, standard and premium, have very similar design language, though I haven't held a premium yet, has, has anyone? <laughs> the metal chassis with plastic inserts, the blocky rectangular design, the now uncovered, yet still waterproof jacks, micro USB and headphones, frosted glass on the back, which feels very premium, plus a welcome lanyard hull here on the compact. A variety of colours are available depending on market, though this is black, boring, but always my choice as you know. A core feature is the fingerprint sensor here on the right, built into the now rectangular power button. This is fast and natural. You pick up the Z5, you press the power button with your thumb or finger if you're a lefty, and bang, you're in, into the phone and potentially authenticating Android Pay when you need to in the future. These sensors are now got terrifically fast and Sony have got it right for the Z5 range. The same really rather good camera is used in each of the Z5 range, a 23 megapixel, one over 2.3 inch sensor with an F over 2.0 aperture. <laughs> Oversampled by default, okay, okay, Sony call it super sampling to avoid Nokia copyright infringement, <laughs> to create purer, clearer eight megapixel output images. Sony calls this mode superior auto and the idea is that it analyzes the focus point and lighting and automatically switches everything to the right settings for that particular shot. So landscape or fill in flash uh, or macro or night mode or whatever. It's a very clever idea and one that Sony has taken until now to get right. But I'd argue that for the first time in four years, Sony's imaging engineers are now showing signs of being awake at their desks. Uh, this is the first in the Z line that I'd be prepared to use as my main smartphone camera without too many worries. Here are some samples in a variety of conditions. The lack of OIS is a shame, but maybe they couldn't master this with such a relatively large lens. Remember that Nokia for its monster Lumia 1020 had to resort to a ball bearing OIS design. <laughs> Noise is kept largely under control. I'm still seeing artifacts in low light shots, so Sony's job isn't quite done, but the Z5 camera is clearly a big step forwards all round for them. It can't quite compete uh, with the LG G4 and Samsung Note 4, 5 and Galaxy S6 units, but it's not lagging miserably behind anymore. <laughs> Video is captured at 4K and with the usual temperature warnings, but in fairness, you have to record 4K for a good 20 minutes before anything shuts down. So unless you're planning to shoot something astonishing and using up eight gig of disk space in one go, then you really won't have a problem here. Stabilization is excellent, 
digital, but very good, even in full 4K mode, and there's full stereo audio capture at the same time. Playing back video shows that the Z5 has, yes, front-facing stereo speakers, and they're pretty good. They're not in Nexus 6 territory, let alone Marshall London territory, but on maximum volume, they still throw out a, an enjoyable soundtrack to anything you're doing on the phone. Here a bit of uh, The End of Supper's Ready from the Steve Hackett Band. Recommended. Battery life is a key unique selling point here. Despite the diminutive size, it's 2700 milliamp hours uh, driving a 720p screen and with a use case that probably doesn't involve lengthy gaming sessions or media watching. Allied to Sony's usual brace of stamina and ultra stamina modes and tricks means that two days of normal use on a charge is quite well normal. And with care, I reckon I can manage three days <laughs> on this one charge. Standby drain is so low here and there are so many things that can be controlled. Uh, too many in fact. <laughs> I'd argue my head was spinning after about the third page of power settings and options but hey the defaults are already very effective and when you do want to charge it's quick charge 2.0 compatible though you only get a standard 1.5 amp charge in the box sadly. For the asking price of over £400 SIM free in the UK you'd have thought a more powerful charger could have been bundled. Sony's take on Android is well known by now. Xperia UI is light enough as a skin with not too much change over stock Android, though Sony does love adding in all their music and media stuff, <laughs> tying in with the Walkman brand for music and the PlayStation brand for games and movies. And only about half of it can be uninstalled should you want to. For a control freak like me, it's always annoying to have services and apps on screen that I could do nothing about, but maybe that's just me. Most normal users, and especially anyone with existing Sony TVs, headsets and PlayStation consoles, will be like a pig in clover, <laughs> since everything apparently hooks up. Sony's widget apps, now named Sony's small apps, are still available. You drag up from the multitasking carousel and then drag around the screen as needed. On the small screen here, there are kind of limited use. The timer app was my only one I felt any real use for and I like the way you can swipe these apps off to a screen edge and they stay there picking out ready for use or dismissal. It's all super snappy as you'd expect with an 810 under the bonnet. Absolutely nothing lags. I can't even conceive of a use which would make it to slow down. Some people have commented on the speed of launching the camera but after the initial two second launch after booting the app stays in RAM and it's effectively instant thereafter. The Z5 Compact is all about why you'd want a 4.6 inch screen phone in late 2015 and often only a 4.3 inch screen phone as you lose screen real estate for the virtual controls. You grab this because you want something fast and powerful with decent camera, insanely good battery life and which doesn't dominate your hand or pocket. At over £400 it's not cheap, but it is high quality in every way, and you're paying for a tool that will see you through thick and thin for about two years, with Android Marshmallow and beyond. I can see the attraction, heck I've argued for something like this for ages, though the, the extra gig of RAM and extra half an inch of screen in the standard Z5 is still very tempting now that I've tried the specs out on its smaller sister. Both recommended though, price notwithstanding.